blue eyeliner. You know, the one that's been advertised on TV. It's really pretty. Yours is nice too. What is it? Overseas magic. <coughs> it's, uh, it's last season's. It's unusual. <laughs> A bit quirky, but unusual. <laughs> it suits you. Okay, ladies, shall I put the coffee on? I need some coffee. I was awake most of the night. <laughs> Me too. Our little one won't be sad. Oh, they're awful at that age. For the fourth time she cried, I made Didi get up. Men should really do more. Yes, but really, being a mother is the best job. Being a mother and still staying sexy. <laughs> you have to work hard at being a couple. But you still have to focus on your career. Here you are, ladies. Here's your coffee. wants to choose German as his first language. Kids are such a responsibility. Just like our figures. I go to the gym twice a week, you know. Oh, me too. Thursday evenings and Sunday mornings. I don't do Saturdays. I go shopping then. And evenings are just for Jean-Marc and me. Our private time together. Staying seductive is so important. And being a good mother at the same time. <laughs> a maid in the living room, a cook in the kitchen, and a whore in the bedroom. Why are you saying that? <laughs> what do you mean? What you just said? It wasn't very nice. A bit crude. That's exactly what it was. But it's just an expression. I didn't make it up. It's a well-known phrase, part of everyday language. I don't understand. Me neither. Me either, I have to admit. A maid in the living room, a cook in the kitchen, and a whore in the bedroom. It's, it's a well-known expression. It's like, I don't know. Um, Six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's completely different. What's that got to do with it? All right, you could say from start to finish. <laughs> I'm none the wiser. I can't keep up. Well, you explain it then. Better not to explain anything. Look, what I'm trying to say is that it wasn't me who invented it. Someone already put the words together in everyday speech, that's all. That's how it was created before I even opened my mouth. So, it wasn't your fault. Okay, right then. lovely, but it's difficult to manage. Oh, I wash mine with fruit acid shampoo. It's ridiculous the amount of money I spend on all these products. Oh, you can tell your hair looks amazing. Absolutely, Dis. Your hair's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, half past already. Oh. <laughs> Rose, could you bring the post in, please? Sure. Are you okay, Deuce? 
You look a bit upset. <laughs> well, it's nothing. <clears throat> look, I don't want to sound like a bitch, but I just felt Rose was quite rude this morning. Really? I'm sure she didn't mean it. <laughs> yes, you're probably right. Anyway, ladies, you haven't asked me what I did at the weekend. Well, gosh, no, we haven't. So what did you do? I went to the Catholic Support Association for Homeless Men. It takes a lot of guts, you know, to care for men who are vulnerable. Some of them are aggressive, but you just have to understand them. They're destitute. Who can blame them? <laughs> anyway, that's what I did all day Sunday. You served them meals all day? No. You haven't asked me what I was doing. <laughs> okay, so what were you doing? I sacrificed my body so that these, these men, these outcasts from society can re-experience orgasm. <laughs> so they can have sex with a clean woman with a good job with minimal fuss. That's it. <laughs> Children who've just had a shower. John Margaret and I had sex on Sunday after lunch. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'd eaten too much buffalo over and I was still digesting my food while we were at it. I had a terrible stomachache right up to seven o'clock when the political broadcast was on the television. I was very hysterical about the whole thing. I've learned not to moan. I had to give relief to eight homeless men. <laughs> I was really pushed for time by the end of the day. I had to be home at six to prepare dinner, so I had sex with the last three at the same time. <laughs> I do feel guilty. I couldn't help it. I, I don't understand. Blanche, I'm sure you're right about Rose. She probably what? Oh, and all those nasty, vulgar things Rose said earlier. I mean, it's just like the time she said you were disorganised. <laughs> she obviously wasn't thinking. She wouldn't harm a fly. <laughs> Maybe. Still think she's a bit weird. Why would she say that? She looks so smug when she talks. Here's yours. Chocolate. No, you've got no taste. That's nice. 
You didn't say that when I bought you a Christian Lacroix blouse for your birthday. <laughs> that was only to be bitchy. I was only teasing you. <laughs> Actually, it's not very nice to tell me the price of a present you've given me. It's petty. Honestly, Rose, you surprised me. Hang on. I wasn't saying I was sorry I bought Deuce the blouse. Well, what were you saying? That I was just saying that, that she owes you something just because you bought her the blouse. Oh, that we're not allowed to tease you. <laughs> exactly like I did earlier. You criticise me for not having a sense of humour. But when I do laugh about it, you're still not happy. You treat me like a loser who's not allowed to defend herself. Is that it? If that's rubbish, I was only trying to be friendly. Yes, well, your version of friendship upsets me. I was reading an article about this sort of thing the other day. It's called Double Bind. Double Bind? Double Bind. It's when people say things that contradict one another. It makes you go mad. For instance, tonight, you tell your husband you're going out with your friends and he says, if you like, but he's scowling when he says it so you can tell he's annoyed. So you say, do you mind if I go out without you? And he says, I didn't say that. So now you're not sure whether if you do go out you wish you hadn't, or if you stay in you wish you hadn't either. That's double bind. Oh, oh, sounds a bit complicated. What's that got to do with us? Do you think we're bitches? Oh, nutters! Stay on that. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. I don't know why I'm so upset. <laughs> Perhaps you need a holiday. Oh, absolutely. You don't look well. You've got dark circles under your eyes, too. A bit worrying. I don't know what to say. Rose, can you come into my office, please? Yes, sir. Coming right now. I have to go, ladies. I'm sorry I'm feeling so on edge right now. So it seems. She's got a problem. Probably with her husband. Of course. Marital problems are so serious. It's such a shame. There is definitely something going on there. A personal problem. A very specific, very psychological. I pick up on these things. I'm sensitive to them, to them, you know. Didn't you say that she's never got to work on time in the whole of the last two years? It's right. Do you think it's a symptom of an illness? Lots of people get to work late. Yes, but being persistently late that's something else. That's a sign of deep contempt for others. In the same way, compulsive behaviour is a sign of vulnerability or of certain sensitivity. Just like drinking alcohol, smoking, and overeating. But I never get to work late. <laughs> Still, we have just as many things to do in the morning as she does. Exactly the same. 
same things. Showering, waking the kids, making their breakfast, putting blue eyeshadow on. I have to say, this eyeshadow isn't good quality. The blue is too blue, and by this evening, my eyelids will have blue wrinkles. <laughs> I don't want to be old. <laughs> <laughs> well, makeup doesn't last long, and it's not a good idea to put it on under neon light. Makes your cheeks look too red, like an old woman's. But first thing in the morning, you don't have a choice. It's neon or nothing, and who are you trying to impress anyway? It's important to keep fit. I go to the gym twice a week. <laughs> I do three minutes of exercises on the bedroom carpet to strengthen my abs and glutes every morning. Me too. Didier says I look like a cockroach stamping its little feet. <laughs> Apparently, a cockroach is one of the toughest creatures around. <laughs> oh, those tiny little insects freak me out. The ones that buzz around so quickly. Oh, they freak me out. Oh, oh no, I like it when they swarm everywhere. Oh, can we just drop the subject, please? <laughs> By the way, can you smell a funny smell? Yes, I can. <laughs> I think it's coming from Rose's chair. It must be her B.O. Oh. Actually, she's oh. wearing a synthetic blouse today. <laughs> well, if it's not cotton, I can only wear natural fibres, cotton, <laughs> linen, silk if I have to. Silk makes you sweat? Oh, I suppose one of your down and outs told you that on Sunday. No, Eve's bought me a silk blouse. I was sweating all summer. <laughs> Summer's different. <laughs> it's best not to wear synthetics if you sweat all year round. <laughs> Wait a sec, I, I, I'll, I'll check her chair. Oh, for God's sake! How dreadful would that be? 
but it wasn't a game for me on Sunday. It was just like all that, but it was real. She's coming back, look out. <laughs> Hi ladies, what have you been talking about? You look a bit like naughty children. Okay, let's get back to work now. Lift up your hearts, as they say in the scout house. Oh, <laughs> who made fun of an apprentice in a garage in Tunis. They were all 12 years of age and the apprentice was 18 and a simpleton. Anyway, my grandmother said there were eight of them. He was on his own. <laughs> One day they wanted to see if they could pump him up like a tyre. <laughs> they pulled down his overalls and stuck the hose between his buttocks. So they did. They pumped. He died, said my grandmother. All of his intestines exploded, poor boy. I never understood why they didn't say the poor idiot or the poor victim. And why is the word victim feminine in French? Look, Rose, you can always get changed at lunchtime. You've got an hour, that's plenty of time. <coughs> sure. Maybe you've gone a bit too far. Well, her B.O. is annoying us, isn't it? I'm just saying out loud what everyone else is muttering under their breath. Just That's like all. Le Pen with immigrants. That's got nothing to do with it. I vote left when you know. I'm just being completely selfless and thinking about everyone else. There are worse sacrifices one can make than giving up your lunch break for the common good. Obviously, Barrier doesn't get it. She's got dandruff, have you noticed? Oh, I wash my hair every other day. It's not true anyway. I, I've got no more dandruff than you. What did I tell you? You can't even talk to her anymore. Oh, Why are you getting at me, Rose? I'm not getting at anyone. I'm, I'm simply saying it's not true that I, I don't have dandruff. You've got dandruff because you're stressed. Just stop scratching! <laughs> <laughs> you're also... Pathetic! That's enough, Rose! You've gone too far now. Do you really think we're the pathetic ones? Are we the ones who have got to work late every morning for the last two years? How insulting she is after everything we've done for her. After everything we've done for you, Rose! And what exactly have you done for me? We care about you. We talk to you. Much more than you actually talk to us. Can't you see that? No. Seriously? Yes. Threatening our ability to work together as a team. <coughs> well, I have done something without realising. I'll talk to them. We'll get to the 
bottom of it and, and everything will be all okay. Maybe she's got issues. Oh, that's no excuse. I have to admit, the things she said frightened me. The way she spoke to you, Belle, it's obvious she hates us. Mm -hmm. It's scary. I'll talk to them and everything will be all right. <laughs> Sometimes, when I'm with Jack, things he says really hurt. I don't think he does it deliberately. I don't know. I'm not sure. Who's at fault? Is it the words themselves or the sense of injury? <coughs> Seems to me I'm getting all the blame. He says I'm an egotistical monster that I never put myself in other people's shoes. I, I only think of myself. <sighs> I must talk to them. <laughs> but what should I say? Hatred is a terrible thing, but it's not the opposite of love. What are you saying, Belle? That I've never known love? It's just a Buddhist proverb. Um, fear is the opposite of love. Or maybe it's something else. So you're a Buddhist. Do you believe in reincarnation? Isn't one life good enough for you? Not what she believes is her own business. I don't believe in anything. I just go along with the basic rules. The less I believe, the more important these rules seem. I'm a vegetarian. I only eat vegetables and whole grain rice. Sometimes, on Sundays, I allow myself a little treat. I'm not Buddhist Blanche. I'm Christian. Last Sunday, I ate so much stilt and I was still digesting my food when Jean-Marc climbed on top of me. He certainly didn't come. I had a terrible, terrible stomachache. <laughs> I could never be a vegetarian. I like meat too much. <laughs> I don't know why. Why do you say things like that? I want to slap you. You <laughs> got bows for that! Oh, and I thought you were an idiot! Let's stop arguing, oh, please, ladies. The atmosphere is bad enough with her snivelling in the corner. Oh, it's worrying that she's crying. She must be really upset. Oh, we should just ignore her. It's less cruel. <laughs> were you listening to me just now? I was saying that last Sunday I had a terrible stomachache, but actually I didn't. I was lying. What? I don't come. I'm dry inside. I'm dry as a date. Dates are sweet too, though. I must talk to them. Maybe the coffee was too weak. No, that's silly. Last week, when we were brainstorming, I couldn't do soft and challenged her forecast. That's it. I didn't give it enough thought. Jacques says I can't see in front of my own nose. Jean-Marc gets hard. He doesn't care whether I'm aroused or not. He couldn't care less. He's got his technique on. He's okay. Men sometimes forget about full play. It's up to the woman to say something. You have to say what you want to. S sex is just words. For 15 years I said nothing. I pretended without saying anything. Faking it isn't the answer. In Mexico, in Mumbai, in 10 years, 90% of humanity will live in enormous cities. The rest will die in the desert. Dear Deuce, your letter really shocked me. Don't make fun, Belle. I could kill someone. Dear reader, your problems are concerned with many women. My advice is to talk to your husband when you're alone at dinner. <laughs> During this intimate moment, it's up to you to seize your happiness. Don't hesitate to write to me again. <laughs> we need to talk. Oh, really? What about? Um, I'm so sorry about last Sunday, Deuce. It, it won't happen again. What is she talking about? Look, whatever I've done, I apologize. Please forgive me. I, I promise I'll... I'll work harder to, to sort out my dandruff and get cotton shirts. <laughs> it's just so depressing to see someone be such a pushover. <laughs> I can't see her ever being promoted. <laughs> me neither. The company needs leaders. Will you just listen to me? She's totally lost it. Have I said or, or done something to upset you? <laughs> She's even let her figure go. Like her. 
I like people with strong characters, real personalities. No one's ever had to worry about me. You won't catch me, no. I never get tired. When you have to travel for the company, you can't afford to get tired. So I take a cocktail of vitamins. The label reads, for travel fatigue in adults. I'll take one every day until I retire if necessary. Well, I suppose that's a journey of sorts. <laughs> I must be ill. My left eyelid keeps twitching. It's true. I'm exhausted. I want to sleep, but I can't because this eyelid is driving me mad. Just this one. I need to see a doctor. I've got to get out of here. I really like to make progress, but not like poor Barry in here. Last week, the director said to me, Blanche, you'll make progress. So I stayed at work until 11 p.m. to complete a file he entrusted to me. Not to anyone else, he insisted on that. With this fake smile, you know the sort you always teach us, mm -hmm. on a Friday evening. <laughs> Blanche, I trust you. Completing this file is your responsibility. He called me Blanche. He always does that. So I smiled and finished the job. I wonder if he really thinks I'll work myself to death in exchange for some nice words. Well, neither of you have a choice. You both believe it. He called you Blanche and it made you smile. You're quits. What's the point in moaning about it? You know, she really doesn't look well. Maybe we went too far? Mm. I never know. It's a complete waste of time. Tiredness is a strange thing. I never get tired of work. But holidays wear me out. Once we're there, I spend all day cooking meals. Well, not much, but it all seems tougher. My little girl spends all day crying, and then every evening after dinner, John Mark wants his technique. Then he falls asleep. I can't sleep because I can hear the sound of crickets outside. I remember when I was the same age as my son. I would listen to the sound of crickets in my grandfather's garden. I'd imagine myself in an evening gown with a man kissing me, and that image was enough to keep me going. Now when I hear the sound of crickets, I don't feel anything at all. It doesn't work anymore. When I first realized the image was gone for good, I felt hatred. I can wish for anything in those sleepless moments. I could wish Jean Marc was dead. Or that the heart of my little girl who knows nothing of lost images, would simply stop beating. So I get up and go to the bathroom to see if all this hatred shows. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely, Deuce, it doesn't show. You know, uh, she really doesn't look well. Deuce doesn't look too good either. You know, you should keep active, Deuce, even when you can't sleep. I often get insomnia because of the vitamin cocktail, but when I do, I don't waste time. I read essays on global economics. I don't like novels. I don't like stories. I wonder what she's thinking. What are you thinking, Barrier? Are you dreaming? Barrier? She can't hear me. She's just not answering. Maybe she's tougher than we think after all. It's my eyelid. It, it won't stop twitching. It's bothering me so much I can't hear what you're saying. I'm so worried it's serious. I need to see a doctor. Why do they keep saying my name like that? Barrier. It's not even my name. It's Jacques. Do you read novels, Blanche? I'm too busy with work to have time to read. If they reduce staff numbers, it won't be me who gets the sack. They've got to reduce staff numbers. Listen to me. I don't know what's happening to me. I, I think I've got a problem with Jack. Does he make you come? <laughs> That's not it. Something really weird is happening here. I can't see clearly. Look at your skirt. It's black, isn't it? There's no doubt about that. But that's not enough for me. If you were to tell me that, that my skirt isn't black, it's red. You'd say as if it were an obvious fact with just a hint of mockery to scare me. Your skirt isn't black, it's red, can't you see? I believe you. I think that, that you were right, that you're the one who sees clearly. I'd admit to myself that yes, my skirt is red. How do you know about the plans for staff cuts? The director told me. He said, Blanche, I'm telling you before it becomes official.
official. I know him from the street. I suppose he said it was that idiotic grin he breaks into on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Totally. Jack tells me I'm so stupid and I believe him. You become stupid when you no longer doubt anything. When he asks me if I've come, I, I say I don't know, and then he tells me, you're so stupid. That's very sad, Rose. But in this office, we talk in a professional tone. Emotional problems must be restricted to what is absolutely necessary. Necessary for what? Profitability. Oh, she's right, Phil. Management's planning to cut the size of the team. One of us? Yes. Well, that's unfair. We, we all do a good job. <laughs> all of us? We have to be realistic, Belle, not idealistic. It's the law of the jungle where only the strongest survive, and the weakest are automatically cast aside from the road to success. Life's harsh. There's world hunger, car accidents, grief. I'm not wearing any knickers today. <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> Are you okay, Rose? Are you crying? We've not um, hurt you, have we? I don't know how all this has happened since this morning. It's it's like a machine that's it's gone out of control.
I had sex with Dufour, you know. Really? Go on. A couple of weeks ago, I had to come back to the office because I'd left my red cardigan on my chair and I really wanted to wear it the next day. Just as I was leaving, I bumped into Dufour coming out of the director's office. We gave each other a look and then very calmly he lifted up my skirt. <laughs> the black one I wear on Friday. <laughs> That's it. He wasn't a bad lover for a man in a hurry. <laughs> Rose, is that man on the phone in a hurry? <laughs> my phone conversation. I'm so happy to talk to someone. At least you've recognised my capabilities for some time. Some mistakes. A question of competence. What do you mean a question of competence, Monsieur Dufour? Are you in on it too? Do they call you or something? No, I'm not paranoid. You've been calling me now for two years, hassling me 30 times a day, asking the same questions for the exact same details, as if that's going to resolve your financial problems, Monsieur Defour. <laughs> and you think I'm the paranoid one? Monsieur Defour, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I wasn't thinking. Yes, of course. I'll pass you over to someone who's competent.
avenged me. Go weak. My limbs go weak. 
My head pulses like thunder. Suns exploded to fragments in my belly. His skin under my nails. I look into his eyes as we go faster and faster. I think I'm screaming! But I'm not. That's exactly it. I've stopped thinking about my cellulite. I've completely forgotten about it. <laughs> I hate my body. I'm hungry. It's killing me. Oh, let's have some food. Do you want a meal replacement? Mm. The ones I've got are very healthy, packed with proteins and minerals. <laughs> Save time too. To do what? I don't know. To sleep tonight, to get up tomorrow, to keep going. So life goes on. <laughs> That's what she said. I'd like to dream tonight. Do you think it's possible to forget it? What did she say? That she'd like to not wake up. What did you say? Life goes on. 